What's up, bros? This is Dave. I'm here with EJ, and we're doing this conjunction thing here this week where we're going to be reporting and interviewing at Seagraph. And so, of course, bright and early, very first guy of the day, very first bro of the day, <laughs> is EJ. And uh, we, we had to go through a little bit of trouble to find you some caffeine to get going in the morning. But um, I wanted to talk to you about your presentation because we did the podcast last night. Yeah. And I um, was talking about all of the, um, the, the rigging stuff that's new in R19 and I'm like the problem is I don't know enough about rigging to even know oh hey that's cool whatever so what's great is this morning that's kind of what your presentation was on you were talking about joints and stuff like that yeah. and I learned an awful lot so um, tell everybody kind of just an overview of what you talked about today yeah so I don't know I'm not so into the IK and the rigging thing that I know enough is what's changed because like with my if anyone's watching any of my rubber hose stuff where it's like rubber hose style rigging where you're not even using joints and you're not doing any weighting at all. You're just using a spline with some spline wrap and it's just very like capsule objects for the arms, like very stick figure looking stuff. But it gives you the basics of rigging. So basically my, uh, my whole talk was like if you don't know any rigging at all, here's the basic fundamentals. Like what's FK? What's forward kinematics? What's inverse kinematics? Trying to like... De demystify the whole rigging thing because that's the first step because I think for me especially it's just your exposure to rigging is like these complex bipeds and like everything's got complex hand rigs and eye rigs and mouth and cheek and you're just like where the heck do you even begin with that stuff so what I've done is like I have a very simple character I broke down it's a little octopus dude it's got eyeballs a mouth and a bunch of tentacles and I just show you how to uh, rig one of those tentacles using joints, and just simple joint setup, go over what a goal is, it controls like where the hand positioned is, and like a pole, and that what's where your elbow points to, and uh, then threw on some IK dynamics, so you can then make a joint chain like all nice and floppy, and showed how these tentacles can look like they're you know, floating underwater and stuff like that. And then I covered like some simple uh, mouth rigs using some pose morphs, and a thing called 2D vector field, which is really amazing. It's basically like, I, I say it's like almost programming a, an Atari joystick controller. I like that, I didn't know about that. Or if you like push up, it does something to your character. Like if you look up or like crouch and you know, like Sonic the Hedgehog or something, like if you push the up control. So basically you can program different controls if you move this little vector up or down or left or right to each of the corners. So that was all driven by like pose morph and driver, uh, a driver tag, which which is really really powerful. And I did just a simple uh, like eye uh, rig using uh, a target tag and some uh, like just circle splines to create some really simple uh, eye rigs. But it's just showing people that don't know any of it all, like how simple it was. Like I basically rigged and set up a whole rig control for face and everything in 50 minutes and like it's pretty it's pretty flexible it's it's right there in your viewport you can do the smiles and all the all the facial expressions and and i just like brush the surface so hopefully you know people after they watch it will like get into rigging a little bit more and start to learn a little bit more because you need to ease in like rigging so deep no pun intended no pun, exactly yeah yeah but uh yeah yeah I like what you were doing with the textures in the splines too. I didn't really know that you could do that, like to drive it. Spline shaders, yeah. So like you can rig up, so I just had a mouth, just very primitive mouth that's just a sweep object and a circle going along a, a spline. And then you just basically animate the, uh, the spline using the pose morphs. And then you can use that same spline to like color in the like mouth color. So I had a green octopus, I wanted like a pinkish mouth. So I just use a spline shader that allows you to put uh, apply uh, spline as a material. So like it's good for like using text because usually if you wanted to put text on a logo or an image on a logo, you would go into Photoshop, make your text, save it out with the alpha, apply it as a tech uh, as a material with alpha. Uh, but then sometimes you might be like, oh well, I'm zooming in too close to this and it's starting to get aliased. So what you need to do is jump back into Photoshop, scale it up, resave it at a higher resolution, and reload. But 
The nice thing about the spline shader is you can zoom in super close and it's non-destructive. So it's always going to have nice crisp edges. So you can use it with text, that's the default setting. But you can also use any spline in your scene as a little knockout cut, uh, cutout shape. So I did that through it in the uh, alpha channel, apply it as like a little mouth uh, material, and then that basically follows the deformation of the, uh, the pose morph. So that mouth shape will actually fall on around so you actually have the inside color of your mouth uh, with a spline shader, which is really, really cool. So uh, we're going to be doing these interviews throughout the next three days. So, so tell me who you're looking forward to interviewing. Oh, well, Beeple's always fun. I think, I think just because R19 just released, talking to a lot of the Maxon, uh, the Maxon team itself, like the, 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 the main professional guys, and just getting the, the nitty-gritty details of like what's all the new features, what are they really excited about, uh, is going to be a really interesting thing. And just talking to all the amazing artists here, there's a lot of VR artists uh, that are here as well. There's a 13-year-old or 15-year-old, yeah, 13-year-old kid that just made his own VR games. He owns his own, owns his own business, so it's a lot of variety of people here, like a lot of really super talented people. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in... Uh, I mean, Beeple's here. Beeple's doing his very first presentation for Maxon, which is really exciting. So he's always, you never know what's going to happen with him when he shows up. But uh, yeah. And so uh, what about the rest of the show floor? Is there anything besides Cinema 4D that you're looking forward to checking out? Oh, man. Typically, I don't leave this like little sk square here. Yeah. Uh, well, I just bought my eGPU box, the Sonnet breakout box. And now I'm like, I, all this news is coming out about these new cards, and I was like all set on getting my one card, but now I might have to like buy another one that just came out or is coming out next week. So, uh, yeah, o, uh, Otoy's not here, but the, yeah, Otoy's here. Uh, they're here. Redshift's here, so I need to like you know check them out. Uh, Nvidia's here, and they I think they have a setup where they actually have uh, connected to a iMac, I think. They have one of the breakout boxes. Yeah. That, so I want to check that out. Just kind of like get their input on, you know, what card I should be getting. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have been asking me about my uh, setup because I, I, I said I got my eGPU, but I haven't got my card yet. So once I do, I'm going to, I'll be able to, I'll do a podcast and, and go through the whole setup. And I just was talking to a guy who said he got a, bra he got a Bison box and it started smoking and sparking. Uh-oh. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, well, all right, hopefully I don't have anything catch on fire. So that was kind of, that was interesting. Generally, that's not good. Yeah, generally fire in a studio is not good. You can roast marshmallows, but yeah, got to contain that thing. It's expensive marshmallow roasting. It is. It's very, very expensive. And it's got that silicon smell. It's probably not good to eat. Yeah. Too many calories. All right, so um, we're going to get out of here. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to BroGraph and iDesign. We're going to have a bunch more interviews. So subscribe to both of our channels and check us out, and we'll catch you in the next one.